Now look, people tell me all the time, Savage, I get to end game, bro, and I die. I don't understand it. You tell me to play aggressive and then I end up dying. Look, when it comes to end game, and I'm gonna say this a lot, and, and a lot of the reason you don't hear it is because most of y'all don't watch the end of the video. End game situations are probably the most crucial because it teaches you how to slow down your gameplay and stop being so damn aggressive. Being aggressive is amazing beginning and mid game, but come to end game, skirt. What is going on guys, Savage here. In today's video, we're gonna be going back to our roots and really diving in depth with strategy. We will be spectating a random quads gameplay and discussing the aspects of teamwork, but again, really discussing how they should be winning these gunfights more efficiently. That way they can get in and get out and not get third party. Most of you guys take way too long in gunfights and you end up getting shot in the back screaming, how am I always getting third party? Most of the time it's your fault. So what this video is gonna do is enlighten you guys on how to avoid being shot in the back. But if you are new, make sure you subscribe to the channel today. Leave a like on the video if you enjoy it. The goal for today's video is 1000 likes and without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the gameplay. All right, but ladies and gentlemen, right off the bat, not wasting any time at all, we are spectating Timnak, who is in a 1v1 situation. Now, I want you guys to notice his movement during that fight. When he was in that fight, he didn't just plant his feet and just ADS the enemy and pray to God that he hit his shots. No, he maintained movement. It wasn't the best movement in the world, but he still maintained movement, so you have to give him a little credit there. Whether you're drop shotting, whether you're sliding side to side, whether you're stepping side to side, or if you're just bunny hopping, keep your body moving. Most players, when they see a target, they aim for the biggest mass possible, which is center mass, aim for the chest. So if you guys are moving, jumping around, it forces them to move their crosshair, and most of the time, average players will miss their shots. Maintain movement in your gunfights, you will become a better player. Stop just sitting still and ADSing. This isn't like other Call of Duties where when you moved, you had a penalty to your accuracy. You don't. Maintain your movement, win your gunfights more efficiently, get in and get out. All right, not really sure of everything that's going on. We do have a teammate in the gulag and we have blue and or light blue and green holding pockets. Not really sure exactly what they're doing. No pings out right now. I'm not sure if there are other enemies around. Timnak has a little bit of stick drift right there. You can see it. he's probably using a scuff. I can say that I've had three of them. They all have stick drifts, every damn one of them. All right, but what do we need to do? We need to get money. We're just sitting in an, in an attic, not knowing what the hell's going on. There's a green ping on the building in front of us. I don't know if there's a teammate there or an enemy there. There might be, but we need to push him. Blue shooting at somebody, he's pinged out in the open. Maybe we can go over there and collapse on him and pick him out because if that ping is legitimate, he's out in the open, vulnerable. As you can see, another ping being launched, meaning the enemy is running away. Because we hesitated, because we waited too long, we weren't able to get that free kill. You guys, as players, need to react quickly. When your teammate marks somebody, if you're relatively close and you can collapse, do it immediately. Again, don't just tunnel vision on the enemy. You want to make sure that there's not other players around you that can pick you, but push the target efficiently, push them smart, think about your plays. All right, here we are again, just, this is a, something we see a lot with average players as well, is they just loot buildings that are already looted. We need money, we need money fast, we need weapons. How are we gonna get it? Not by looting shit, our teammates already looted, that ain't gonna do nothing, at all. All right, I don't know why we're pushing up. A little 360 for no reason at all. Again, this is kind of questionable. Oh, okay, this is something else we see with players. Tip number two, guys. You need to come up with a decision together. Now look, a lot of you guys probably like, well, he's probably playing with randoms, this and that. And yeah, he probably is. Join our Discord. I'm not telling you guys to join it to boost my followers. It does zero for me. My Discord literally does nothing for me. I made it for you guys to find teammates. There's 15,000 players in our Discord. You guys want to play with people who use microphones or has a headset and just communicates? Join our Discord. There's no reason not to. And another tip I want to give you is before you act, you need to make a decision. The fact that he started walking off that way and was doing 360s and shit, and then he turned around and hightailed it right back to where he was just at, he had no game plan, he had no decision. He's just kind of on an autopilot going wherever the hell he wants to. You need to think, this game is like chess. It isn't checkers. You can't just start throwing shit around and expect to win. It is a strategy-based game. You have to make a game plan, you have to make a decision, and you have to execute it. Don't just run around aimlessly. If you want to run around aimlessly, go play some Minecraft. This is not the game for that. All right, we're going right back to where we just came. Again, blue is also looting what we've already looted. All right, also kind of, he is on autopilot. He's literally just running. No slide canceling, no nothing. Definitely on autopilot, for sure. <laughs> I've never seen someone just run into a wall like that before. Not during spectating, at least. 
All right, so we've essentially not really done much. We're getting a little bit more money, but the circle's about to collapse and we haven't engaged in a single fight, at least not since we started spectating. Lo and behold, there's a fight going on right now. No pings going out from Godoy. We are able to go ahead and hopefully collapse on the enemy and hit our shots, maybe. We hear multiple sets of footsteps and he goes to the execute. He needs to bail out of here because of the multiple steps that we heard. So when we bust into a window, we instantly heard a lot of footsteps. At least I did. I don't know how loud the game volume is for y'all, but I heard multiple footsteps. Now, let's assume he didn't hear footsteps. Again, that's where callouts are important. You have to call it out. Godoy, who is down, failed to ping, and I'm assuming he failed to tell his teammates, bro, there's a whole squad in this bitch. If you guys are gonna operate as a team, you need to have good callouts. But unfortunately, Tim Nat goes down. Godoy is able to pop a self-res, and... Unfortunately, because our teammate was staring in the window, he didn't notice the enemy coming out the front door. He ended up getting picked. And homeboy Hill with the RPG taking them out of the fight. Wow. All right, so Tim Nack won his gulag. We do have three teammates, but we have one that's missing. What do you do? You get one of your teammates to go land on a supply run, and then one of us will go land on the buy station so we can get our boy back. No, no need to sit there, look for money, waste time to get our teammate back. We need to start focusing on money to get our damn loadout drop. We're down to 79 enemies and we still haven't gotten our single loadout. Half of the lobby has died and we still haven't, I repeat, we still haven't gotten our damn loadout. No reason for that. Not sure what we're doing now. There's no objectives around us right here. Blue's already landed over there by the building. So has green and we're just sitting here floating down to the earth waiting for our death. This is what I always call Mary Poppins floating. Mary Poppins definitely shows my age. A lot of you guys probably don't even know who the hell that is, but this is something you don't do. If you are going to be floating, I usually float either A, to wait for a teammate to make a call out for me to go somewhere, aka a supply run. B, I'm going to be scanning the area, looking down here, looking for little ants, looking for little movement so I know where to avoid since all I have is a damn pistol. Also, not even thinking about me, think about your teammates. Your teammates have already landed. You could be scanning right now around this area, calling out, hey, there's a team pushing you guys, be careful. But instead, we're staring off into space, screaming at our mom to make us some meatloaf, and just it's just doing nothing. I said, no, no. Y'all wanna play like this, that's fine. I got shit going on on the side, that's fine. Don't be playing quads, especially with randoms. This is a dick move. All right, so we do have Tim Knack finally landing in. I don't really see any movement. I think we're okay for now, but again, notice how we're landing on the exact same building as two of our squad mates. This is a big area. It doesn't seem like it's looted. So we need to start looking in other buildings, bro. Separate. You guys want to stay close. Y'all want to stay in this little compound area for sure. Don't need too much separation. But loot different buildings so y'all find money faster. If all y'all are sticking together and y'all open one crate, y'all all just found, what, 2,000 bucks? But if all of y'all spread out and y'all open four different crates, look at that. <laughs> Math, it's crazy. Stop looting together when you need money. Absolutely dumb. It's idiotic. It's not the way to play. And again, I'm not hating. I'm not hating. I'm just trying to stress the point across. Look at these guys. I'm trying to stress the point across and how dumb this kind of gameplay is. It's not the way to do it. He's really trying to find a way in there, but I don't think he's going to. All right, free loadout dropping in. Thank God, finally. But we are going to have to rely on the free loadout drop. Now, that right there, if you guys are waiting every match for the free loadout drop, you've already lost. You've already lost the game. And you're, you're going to have a very hard time getting better at the game. Again, the purpose of loadouts isn't to wait for the free one. The free one's cool, but that's usually what I get ghost with. My first loadout, I try to get before 100 players. I try to get it as fast as possible. And then I continue that momentum getting money for UAVs and other items that we need throughout the match. If you guys are waiting for the free loadout, it means you failed at looting. It means you failed at fighting. It means you failed at being aggressive. And it means if you failed at rotating. Because if you're not finding money, you're not rotating. You're not going from building to building. You're not going from compound to compound. You're just sitting in the same damn spot or letting the gas push you out. So guys, try to avoid being underlooted, undergunned, and undermoneyed. Is that a word, undermoneyed? Um, before the free loadout drop comes on. All right, another thing. Guys, look at this. Savage, stop pausing the video. Look at this. What am I about to bitch about? Why do, why do players do this? I know why players do this. I used to do this myself, and that's why I can sit here and tell you guys what to not do. Because when I started playing Battle Royales with H1Z1 and Arma 3 five years ago, God, I'm old, I did the same shit. Stop staring at the ground. Look at his reticle right now. What is he, what is he about to do? Shoot an ant pile? No. Come on, man. Look, look, guys, look. Mouse and keyboard players, it's not as big of a deal because it's very easy for us to flick up and over, right? But for controller players, it's a lot harder because you all have a stick that moves 360 degrees and it's very hard for a lot of players to flick up and then over. 
perfectly and accurately. So what you guys need to do is decrease the amount of movement to snap on players. Instead of doing this and going all over the place and making some kind of weird snake shit in order to snap on an enemy, raise up your radical. And when you see an enemy, snap on that bitch. Look how fast that was compared to this. What are you doing? No, stop this. I get it. We're looking for loot, the battle royale. A lot of people start looking at the ground. You guys got to stop it. Unless you're opening a crate, there's no reason to ever be staring at the street with your reticle. All right, but here we are getting our loadout. Let's see what he ends up getting. All right, in and out. You got to give him credit. He was in and out of his loadout real fast. That's something we don't see a lot with spectating randoms. Usually they'll be in their crate. They'll be like, no, loadout number one. Um, mm, I don't know. Mm, loadout number two, uh, sniper. What are you guys rocking? Get in and get out, man. Just grab your shit and go. All right, his sensitivity, way crazy. Look at this. Look at this shit. He's driving me up a wall right now. So every time he does, oh my God. Are y'all getting a headache? Cause I'm getting a headache. Every time he does anything, turns, moves, opens a door, picks up loot, vaults, jumps, slides. He like takes his stick and I know he's a controller player. He takes a stick and he just like does this. He does this weird thing with it where he like whips it around. He's like whipping his hair back and forth. It's the weirdest shit. Um, let's just keep observing it. Again, this is too much. Movement is awesome, but this is just pretending like you have good movement. He doesn't have terrible movement, but it ain't good because the whole purpose, he's still doing it, bro. He's just like jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. So the whole purpose of the game is to see shit. You guys want to be able to see in the distance. Again, open up your eyes, use your peripherals, look at the whole monitor or TV and see movement and players coming at you. When he's doing this, he's doing nothing but giving himself motion blur. Granted, even if you have your motion blur off, look at this. Do you think anybody can actually see enemies moving around right now? What if the team is pushing us? Ain't nobody gonna see shit. Why? Because he's doing this. He's like having a seizure with his left hand. This is not, no. Look at this. Oh my God. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it, guys. And look, I give him credit. And again, I'm not hating on him. I am, but I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be a dick. Look, I got to give him credit for trying to have good movement, but guys, you, you're a little too much. You ever heard the term you're doing too much? He's doing way too much, way too much. First off, because of his movement, I know for sure his sensitivity, too high, way too high. When he gets in a gunfight, when he goes to track enemies, he's going to have a very hard time tracking them and killing them because it's too high. You want to have a good sensitivity matching you and having a fast sensitivity, there's nothing wrong with that. Just make sure you have the aim and accuracy and reaction time to match your sensitivity. All right, we're back to this. All right, he's cracked out, bro. He's had a lot of sneak energy. This man said, I love sneak. Savage. I use code Savage at checkout. Look at this. Look at this. Do you guys think he's spotting anything right now? I have a very good eye. I can spot movement and players like it's nobody's business, but dude, you know damn well he didn't see shit. He's looking out the window, just looking cool. He noticed I'm spectating him. He's like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna spectate me. I gotta look like I'm good. No, I don't give a shit. You got 20 people spectating you. Play normal. Come on, man. 360 no scope, another 360. I like that skill. And look, guys, he's having fun. I'm, I mean, we're, we're picking, but he's having, he's having fun right now. It is what it is. But what we should be doing is having fun and rotating, getting the hell out of here, getting money for UAVs, getting money for anything else. And look, guys, you know, I'm hating on his movement and stuff like that, but you got to give him credit. At least he's trying, right? What he's doing is doing too much, but at least he's trying. He's not sitting here just running straight. He's not just sitting here tunnel vision. He's actually trying his best to develop a reaction time, to develop movement speed, to develop finger speed, to really just kind of practice on the sticks. So as much as I went in on him, at the end of the day, all he's doing is too much. That's it. But you got to give him credit where it's due. And I will. All right, but now we have TV station marked. I wonder if we're actually going to go there. Kind of, kind of questionable. De the circle's definitely going to be finishing on the, uh, the right side of the ravine. Not the side that we're on. So I'm kind of curious to see how they play this. All right, so here we are at TV station now. And, you know, we've got a lot of teammates that are kind of straggling behind. This is something you want to avoid. So when you look at Blue right here, he's out in the open by himself. If there were t if there were enemy teams around us and he starts getting blitzed down, he's going to be by himself. He's easy pickings, right? When you guys are traversing, I'm okay with you guys staying separated and doing your thing. But when you're going out in the open, you're in a bad position, you need to work as a group. You don't all have to cross the exact same time, but somebody needs to be supplying cover fire just in case the last guy needs help. We have a good position, but look at this map. Nobody is looking this direction. Nobody. Very surprised no one's here, I'm gonna be honest. TV station is usually uh, a good spot for some campers. We have blue shooting at some team on the hill to the north hand side. Great ping. And unfortunately, he gets picked. Now, skirt. Nah, -uh. before we dive into this, 
we're gonna hit reverse a little bit because again this is about strategy it's about gameplay how to win fights right it's a whole video that's a whole video what did we do wrong what let me know in the comment section right now pause the video we left cover we do we're playing quads we don't know how many enemies there are but i always like to assume there's four enemies when we start a fight so what he does instead of playing with cover is he runs past it there it is so now if we get downed we have a ledge but because of the elevation of the hill we'll get executed he'll be able to see us i don't like this at all we're relying on our sniping skill we don't hit the enemy honestly his sensitivity his ads sensitivity wasn't as bad as i thought it was going to be but in the end he still got executed because he played it wrong again guys play near cover this thing right here was a perfect piece of cover now you might be wondering savage why do i need to stay by cover multiple reasons one you get knocked you crawl behind it you're safe your teammate can pick you up two if you're sitting there shooting an enemy and he ends up peppering you you can just break off to the right play it up and re-engage there's no reason to sit there and just face the whole world ready to take it on start playing smarter not harder guys look at his teammate back there he's getting shit on but he's playing that ac unit as a piece of cover that's what our dude tim Nack should have been doing self is actually doing it correctly all right here godoy is going up uh, never mind going back down let's see how he engages this we have the enemy sitting on i would imagine they rotated to the hill now, I don't like this fight right now. When they first engaged us out in the open, that was a good fight to take. We probably could have won that. We definitely should have won it. But now, with the position they're at on this hill, it's not a good fight because all we're going to be doing is playing tit for tat. If we down them, they'll be safe enough to get rezzed and vice versa. So what I would be doing in this situation is either A, changing my entire angle, leaving TV station, going down to the gas station, and gatekeeping the enemy because the enemies are going to have to leave this hill. They're on the edge of the circle. They got to rotate in. The circle's going to move south. For sure. We're at the very top of the circle. There ain't no way it's going to favor us. It's like a 1% chance. This is just a long, drawn-out fight for nothing. All we're going to do is probably end up getting getting killed or knocked. All right, the enemies have stopped shooting, so I'm going to go ahead and imagine that they are bailing off. Nice live ping, but there you see the live ping going down to the left-hand side. Godoy finally recognizing it. It's time to move. The enemies are done. They, they jumped off the opposite side of the hill. They're going to be running along the ravine to either A, push across the hangar's area, or B, push down to our area, but try to get a gatekeeping position against us. So right now, I don't know why we're still here. It's time to go. Let's leave. I mean, I mean yeah, I guess you can pick up your boys' weapons. That's cool, too. But let's move. Come on, man. The only reason I would think that it may be clear is because they didn't shoot at us, but I still don't like the odds. Now, here we are finally going across, slide canceling properly. Like to see that. Slide's not too long. It's not too fast. He's not jumping and doing any crazy shit. This right here is a scary sight out in the open. We got the buildings next to us. Got to keep maintaining movement. I like that he's checking behind him, though. Notice how he's moving. He's still checking to his right, his left, and his back. I love that. Something you don't see spectating randoms often. We have gunshots at the top of the building right here. And it looks like they're shooting the angle of the tracers. Let me see if I can rewind to the tracers. The angle of the tracers actually looks like it's shooting at the tower at TV station. I don't know, though. I'm going to be honest. I have no idea. But I don't like where we're at. So we're super hyper-focused on these guys. These guys are not at an angle we can shoot at them. You want to be aware of it, but you don't want to focus on it. The problem is the compound behind us. These guys right here. Dude, people love going here. This is a hot spot. It used to be a very hot spot. And this is also a good rotation spot from people coming out of stadium or going towards stadium. Not to mention, look at the circle, right? And a buy station. So they may be there. I don't like the fact that we're just sitting here staring with our back exposed. It's an easy way to get shot in the back, which again is the purpose of this video to help you avoid getting shot in the damn back. You are rotating. Same position though. We have all of downtown to our left-hand side and now our back can, and we're kind of just focused up. If you want to engage these guys, you can, but there's a better spot to do it. All right, so we ended up rotating over here to this buy station. There's an enemy sitting right there. Another reason why I hate this gun. You hit them in the face and they don't go down. He didn't even get his armor break. All right, but right now, so what I don't want this team to do is actually a guy on top of the skyscraper to our south 200 shooting at us, and we are just oblivious. There's the tracer. Again, follow the tracers. I don't see a glint, which is kind of strange, but follow the tracers. Get off of here. Oh, hey, look. I'm so cool. I can, I can 180 no scope. Bruh. 
Stop giving yourself hang time when you're getting sniped at. Bro, as a sniper, when I see someone jump off a building or jump in general, that hang time is perfect opportunity to get a headshot. They're giving us a bigger window to get the shot off. Let's rewind. So as we're up here, we're getting shot at. Instead of just bolting over and dropping off and instantly going ghost on the enemy, we do this. Whee! Right? We're just in a roller coaster. We're at a theme park. This isn't fucking Disney World. Does Disney World have hackers? No. What are we doing? No. This is not what we do. Come on, man. Like right now, there's a perfect opportunity. If this sniper was even half-ass decent, because in this game, believe it or not, this is the easiest Call of Duty to snipe in ever. Ever. So when you create hang time like this, you're giving him a bigger window of opportunity to get that headshot and clap your cheeks. All right, self and meanwhile going 1v1 by somebody, I guess, camping in a corner. And we're still super hyper-focused on this. And this is what I was about to say. I don't want to see this team hyper-focused on the gatekeep. Gatekeep for sure, if you can. But if you look over there and you don't see any activity and you keep kind of peeking over there and you don't see activity, it's time to move on. Let's get out of here. All right, good shit on self. Pick up the money from the guy he killed to get his teammates back. Can't go back there, brother. Sit in Fortnite, you can't build a trap. Okay, no enemies. I would imagine they've already rotated out and gone over to the hangar area. So we need to go ahead and get the hell out of here as well. There's no reason for us to be here. None. Zero. We have the team over here sniping at us, putting a lot of pressure on us, and they're not even here anymore either. They may be pushing us, actually. They may be pushing at us. The fact they knew we were here, they took so many shots. It kind of has me on edge. But we also need to push enemy teams to get their weapons for our two teammates that are now back here and alive. Now look at the circle, what it's about to do. It still favored us. I was not expecting that, but it didn't favor us a lot. Eventually, we will have to leave downtown. Eventually, we will have to go over to FU Mountain and eventually train station or hospital, wherever the circle dictates. So I don't like being here. I wouldn't like being here much longer. I'd go ahead and start focusing on getting the hell out of this area. Maybe going to this hill over here and getting some kills. And again, Getting my teammates with pistols, some damn weapons. But of course, options yours. I guarantee you there are more teams here, so you can stay here and kill them and get their guns as well. Decisions yours, but as far as strategy is concerned, I want to get the hell out of here. Now right, we have gunfire going down here. Good stun. Now while we're stunning, I don't know what self is self. What are you looking at, bro? The enemy's down here. We got it pinged. He should know exactly where he is because we know he needs to be vaulting on top of this ledge and shooting down. The only thing you need to worry about is that sniper that was up there? Is it the sniper still in the skyscraper? He's gonna he's gonna headshot you. So you can either A, vault up there, shoot down, or B, just jump down and contest the enemy. It's up to you. Read the situation in real time. I don't know what he sees, I don't know what he hears, so we can't really make a decision based off of what we see in this player's shoes. However, he's looking at nothing. I will say that much. Oh shit. Okay. Whoa. He didn't see that because he didn't look at him, but look at this. Oh my god. Oh my god. But savage field of view. Yeah, if he's running 80 field of view, he might not see it. That, the minimap might be moved down a little bit and be blocking that. But dude, this is why field of view is so crucial and every console player should have it. They're jumping off this rooftop to come to this rooftop to put pressure on us. I don't know if these two guys are part of the team that's pushing us right now, but if they are or if they aren't, it doesn't matter. They're dangerous. All right, there's the enemy getting in the vehicle. We missed the nade. The enemy jumps out, though, and gets destroyed by it. Let's get a rewind on that one. Look at this, guys. The guy gets in the vehicle. We throw a nade. We're a little bit wide, right? And the enemy jumps out at the at the perfect timing for us. Bad for him. Great for us. What a great timing kill. I love it. There's a sniper on top of the roof right now shooting us in the face. The glint. We go ahead and ego check the shit out of that. Now we're down and self is down above us. Self looks to be getting res by his teammate. Oh, shit. Self getting another. Oh, my God. All right. This sniper's goaded, bro. Got to be careful. It's now a 1v something. I would imagine a 1v3, 1v2. Definitely two players for sure because he heard pop, pop, back-to-back -back shots. So we know there's two, at least. Dunn is in full sprint towards the gunfire like he's motherfucking Rambo. No, absolutely not. You need to get your big ass back here, crawl up that ladder, and get these two reses off. Do not worry about Godoy. Godoy is dead, right? If he comes to us to get the res off, the enemies have a chance to push us or just jump rooftops and get a double kill and a team wipe. The best play for Dunn right now is to go back to where he just came from, get the two reses up, and try your best to get out of this situation. But he's moving to the loot to pick up some plates and pick up weapons. Look at him. And oh, shit. Weird. Holy shit. And you might be thinking to yourself, Savage, he needs weapons, bro. He just got bought back. Give him some credit. No. 
Yo, no! This, there's a time and a place. That is not the time and a place. Look at this guy. There also was another player on the ground level. Bad. Bad juju. Granted, even if he would have got those two reses off, yes, we are not safe. We'd have to move. These guys have a great position. They'd probably kill us regardless. But despite the fact they may have died, we could play what if all day. He should have played that. He should have went for the double res, got him up, and re-entered that fight from a different position. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm kind of excited to spectate Lee or Holmes. Both of them seem to be sniping animals. Here Holmes is with 19 kills and so far looks pretty decent. Looks like we might have a little show. All right, Lee getting another knock. And Tarante getting an execute as well. Lee with another knock. So Lee and Holmes definitely seem to be the team carries. Now again, with the way the circle's positioned, I like that we're sitting here killing teams, but we need to get out of here. Now that we got the team fight one and we got this area clear, we need to rotate to the FU mountain from the far east side of the map. I'm sorry, from the far north side of the map. This this place right here, right behind my webcam. We need to rotate this way because we just cleared out this area. We just cleared out this area down here that our teammates are at. So we know we're safe on the right-hand side. Rotate out here, get up to this mountain and hold the position. That's our best bet. A lot of people think to themselves, I want to go ahead and go to the hospital. And you, it might work out, but... With the amount of people I love sitting on rooftops and most people kind of watch this area because they know you're vulnerable, you'll probably get killed. The more you separate to the north, going wide right, the further separation you have between you and hospital, which makes it harder for the enemies to shoot you. When you have separation, you have more distance. With more distance, it comes a little bit less accuracy. Rotating and how to rotate is extremely, is extremely important. It's not just where do I go? That's not what the whole purpose of rotating is. It's how do I get there without putting myself in a spot where I'm vulnerable to get shot in the damn head. All right, here we are spectating Lee who's taking a vehicle, trying to take a vehicle. And we're going to leave our teammates out in the open. Blue even shoots at us like, bro, what the hell are you doing? Lee not giving two shits. Going to come up here to the FU mountain and take on whatever, whatever he faces. He seems pretty confident bailing out the vehicle. Playing the uh, decent position right now. That's questionable. Ladies and gentlemen, we may have a wall hacker. Again, I'm very good at spotting movement. I'm very good at spotting enemies and changes of colors. So this is what throws me off is I didn't see anything. Now, maybe I will just go around. Maybe his eyes are better than me, but let's, let's see. All right. Nothing so far. We see trees, opening trees, nothing, right? Still nothing. Yeah, you can kind of see a little movement, right? It's just a black orb. I can't really tell. Granted, with filters and stuff, he may see something different, but it's still a little questionable to me um, that he does this. Now, I did see the second player. He may be legit. I'm a, okay, I might be wrong. He could be legit. If he has different filters, that second player I saw when we shot the first one, but that first player, I'm still a little skeptical. Let me know in the comment section what you think. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, we do have the enemies on the right hand side, which again makes me think he might be legit because he looked to the right, didn't even ADS or snap over there. If he was walling, he probably would have seen them. We get the res up, and Lee is back in it. Now, Enterante got left before. Now it looks like his teammates aren't even going to go for the res. You need to get your boy somehow, some way. However, we got to win this fight first. Get the res off, but don't just turn your back, hightail, and run up the hill because you will get shot in the back. Missing our snipe, waiting patiently for the enemy to peek. No, war, where are you going, bro? Oh, weird. Got low angles, man. Look, guys, you got you got to learn angles. You have to learn angles. You know why there's a lot of people that are very good at pool? Because they know angles. When they look at the table, they see what other players don't. And that's what you need to do in Battle Royale. It's not even just Warzone, any BR. So when war goes up here to contest the guys that are right here, right? The ones we've already downed. What am, what am I worried about? Oh, yeah, his right hand side. These guys are sitting at the trees right here, and they got perfect line of sight on this dude's face. Now, you might be like, Savage, no, your mouse is, it has to shoot through a rock. Now, the rock's behind him, fam. He, he can be seen, as you guys see right here. Oh, oh my God. Who would have thought? Angles, man, it's all about angles. Here we are again. No, I knew he was going to do it. I knew it. We've already talked about hang time, and I had a feeling when I saw him going here. It was a good move. Drop it down here and going through the tunnel to change it and get out of here. But no, I don't know what gets players so gassed up for these jumping, for this jumping bullshit, but it's not the way. Look at this. 
Teammate gets knocked. By the way, he's in a place where we can res him. And instead of resing, we bail out and we go, wee again. And he's a good player. 20 kills. And we go, wee right down to our death. So here we are spectating Holmes, who again is split off from the team. But we're going to go ahead and try to contest the team that's up here. A bounty. We spot him. We're switching to our close range weapon. Not a bad decision. Able to get some beams on him. Get the knock. No execute. Enemy pushing up right now. Good. Read. Expecting the enemy coming on our wide right flank and going ahead and leading him and getting some shots off. Great job by Holmes. Now we are in a solo situation. We do have a knock by the tree to the right hand side. I'd want to go over there and grab his money so I can buy back multiple teammates. Fortunately, we're only $400 away, so we can probably get back one. But again, if we would have gone up there and picked up all the money, we'd have way more than $6,900. But... On the flip side, I can sit here all day and tell you guys go pick up that money. But again, there are four enemy teams and our team just died to another squad back there on the mountain. So I don't hate the idea of him leaving. I probably would have grabbed the money while I was there. It was on the way down. But decision is yours, right? Risk versus reward. You could go and get that money in that two seconds that it takes and that enemy team would have the perfect amount of time to shoot you. Who knows? We have no idea how they rotated. We have no idea where they're at. So I don't hate it, but I probably would have done it differently myself. There we are, meleeing the air, getting that damn fly out of our face. I love that shit. This is looted, so there won't be any money here. Another melee. Dude, these freaking gnats won't get out of our face, bro. I get it. Now, look! People tell me all the time, Savage, I get to end game, bro, and I die. I don't understand it. You tell me to play aggressive, and then I end up dying. Look, when it comes to end game, and I'm going to say this a lot, and, and a lot of the reason you don't hear it is because most of y'all don't watch the end of the video. In-game situations are probably the most crucial because it teaches you how to slow down your gameplay and stop being so damn aggressive. Being aggressive is amazing beginning and mid-game, but come to in-game, skirt, freeze up a little bit, think, play the circle, play the edge, and catch people out in the open doing shit like Orange is doing. Orange has 20 kills. He's a good player. But look, what? No. Bro, when you are playing out in the open and you're not near buildings or near cover, now don't get it twisted. I'm not saying camp. But maintain some kind of cover. If a building's cover and that's all you got, it's what you got. Who cares what anyone says? Oh, you're a camper this, camper that. It's in the game, bro. It's time to win the game. It's time to solidify that W, right? So what you guys need to do is exactly what Holmes is doing. We're playing the window. We know there's a team over here because that's who wiped our squad earlier. So he's trying to catch people rotating towards us. Everyone that's on the mountain and past the mountain, they got to move in the open towards us. But unfortunately for our dude, Lee, he's probably going to get fucking destroyed. Here we are scanning. I don't like the fact that we're sitting the way. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Come on, baby. Patient with the shot. Hit it. Ooh. I don't think that should have hit, but ooh. There's another guy. This is going to be easy knock right here. No, nope, no. Nope. He wasn't there. Right here. Boom. There it is. Don't crouch walk by rocks, guys. Look, when you're a sniper, the last thing you want to do is that. The last thing you want to do is this. You don't, when you're playing a rock as a sniper, you're moving fast. You're hitting the left. You're hitting the right. You're B hop, and you're doing something to make it harder on the enemy to shoot you. The fact that he peaked here once and then re-peaked the same spot, dumb. Whenever I'm playing a rock like this, I'm going to peek the right side, peek the left, peek the right, peek the left, create some kind of pattern. And if I haven't been down at that point, I'll change it up on him because he's going to be anticipating me switching sides and then I'm not going to and I'm going to dumb him in the head. Mental games, bro. Play with the enemy's mind because most of these guys, they don't have the same mindset you do. We get that knock. Orange is still alive. Lee, he's in a gunfire right now, shooting his weapon, getting half his armor broken and instantly going down, not standing a chance. Not surprised there. Weird. He pushed out, didn't want to play it slow, and he ended up dying. So now it's on Holmes to get the carry win. Here we are with the enemy getting res. Now look, while I was running my mouth, dude, the guy behind the rock that was down was looking right at us. Would have been a perfect opportunity to get that execution. Get another kill, decrease the enemy player count, and so on and so forth. Right, but here we are now rotating to this building. Now, look, I want to be up on top of this roof. This is going to be the high ground. Granted, you're going to be vulnerable to the guy on top of hospital, but he's got to bail off. If you get this high ground, you can shoot him out the air. Easy kill. Don't take the ladder. If you take this ladder, you can get shot from the guys on the hill right here. Um, I would definitely take the internal staircase, get to the rooftop and get some beams off. The guys on the hill are in gunfire right now. Again, I would make my way to the rooftop real fast. I'd probably already be up there just hope, hoping to join in and fight these kids. We could possibly drop close to 30 kills this game. Your footsteps. Great beams. Wow. It's actually pretty impressive. You just saw his forehead. And granted, if he's got a forehead like me, it's pretty big. It's easy to shoot. But that kid did not. 
All right, we checking around. No idea where the enemy went to. Probably wrapped around the right hand side. Not sure. Look at these guys. Now look, this is again why in game situations of every video I do is so important to avoid shit like this. Now look, when the circle was two circles ago and it looked like it was going to favor this area, all the teams on the hill should have rotated to this area. There's no reason for any team to still be playing this hill. None. We get the knock. We're probably gonna get the execute. Man, that's a hell of an angle to be shooting at us. Did not expect that. I didn't even see him. All I saw was tracers. Kind of questionable. <laughs> kind of questionable. All right, the hill to our 283 is not. Oh, look, look, look at this. Let's just, let's wait. And he's still crawling. And he's still. Bro if you have a teammate down in a position like this in a rooftop like the one we're on has a great angle on you, let him die and get the hell out of there. Let him die, leave him, and get the hell out of there, right? But if you've been blessed to not get knocked when you're going for a res, don't tempt fate to try it a second time. Watch how he slowly crawls to his teammate to meet his freaking maker. Weird! Oh my God, Savage! I don't understand why I always die. Because you don't do shit like that, that's why. Come on, man, no. And again, I'm not making fun of people. I'm just trying to, trying to get it through your head. But again, guys, I've been in this position. I'm not better than anybody. When I first started playing BRs, I did the same shit. I did the same thing, crawling through the fucking bushes, sitting in the, I was that guy. I swear to you, look at this. Look at, he's doing it too. But look, I was that guy. That's why I can give these tips because I was that person that we sit here and laugh about. And everyone always like, Savage is a bully. I'd make fun of myself too. Like that, it's stupid. It's not a good way to play. But that's the reason why I can give these tips because I was that player and now I'm not. So hopefully I can tell you guys what I learned and you guys can take it out to the battlefield and win. Speaking of battlefield, <laughs> check out my battlefield video. It's, it's fire. Again, he should see the glint. There's no reason for him to be out there. We got a guy bailing off on top of us right now. Oh my God. Notice that too. Notice what happened when we got in a gunfight. So he had us dead to rights. He should have won the fight. What threw that entire fight off for the enemy? What threw it off? The fact that we drop shotted, right? That's what literally lost that player in the entire gunfight. So when players shoot at an enemy, when you shoot at an enemy, most of you, most of us, we shoot for the biggest target, center mass, right? The chest. What happens when you change your level? Most enemies, because of the gun being in the way, they won't see it in time or they won't react fast enough to drop their crosshair. They'll just sit there and pray to God they're hitting you without even realizing it. So in those few milliseconds that we drop shotted, the enemy had no time to react because of his slow reaction time had no time to see it because again, the gun's in the way. I mean, look at this. If the enemy drop shots right here, if he goes below your crosshair, you can't see him. So again, Drop shotting, keeping your body moving helps drastically in fights. Going back to the beginning of the video, make sure you guys maintain some form of movement. Sidestepping, sliding side to side, jumping, drop shotting, the list goes on. Don't just plant your feet and try to win a gunfight like this kid did because you will die. All right, but ladies and gentlemen, here we are in a 1v6 situation. Three enemy teams left. They are shooting at each other. We got an enemy gunshot to our left-hand side in the building. We saw the team to the north as well. It should be easy cleanup for your boy. There it is. Crash walking the gas. Great play. Now it is 1v2. Now I only heard one gunshot from the buildings to the left. So I would imagine there is one player over there. The fact that the last team, the third team, hasn't fired leads me to believe they might be under us. They might be playing the bottom floor here. Or they could even be camping one of these buildings next to the guy shooting. I don't know if the guy shooting was in this building or this building. Kind of sounded like this one, but I'm not sure. So when you're analyzing this fight, think about where would I hide? Go back to your camping days. Where would I hide if I was the enemy? You got to do it fast, right? Because this game, it moves fast. Again, here, here, and here, three options. So these are the three options you need to look for, right? You don't have to get on the ledge to your right-hand side. You don't have to play this ledge and look down because the enemy's going to be inside. So all you got to do is play the circle. Make sure these guys don't rotate to safety and make sure when these guys leave, you're on the high ground and utilize your gas mask and you shoot them in the back. There's one enemy getting his armor broken. Now the enemies may even try to get gas, use their gas mask to get safety first. Don't like this at all. We hear the footsteps below us. There's the gunshot as well from the front of the building. They got the kill to the left-hand side. So now it's a 1v2 and they're both below us. This should be a very easy win for your boy. Mm 
great read. Unfortunately, they weren't there yet. You do have one more stun. I would probably throw another one right now. Now that the circle's collapsed, they gotta be right there. They have to be. So before I jumped, I probably would have stunned them again. Ooh, almost missed that parachute. All right, now look, dude, we, we just launched our parachute, which makes noise. There's no reason for the enemy to run out of this building without looking behind him. He should know we're there, 100%. Guys, if you have ears, you should hear it. There's no reason not to. All right, let's see what happens. This guy just bunny hops, didn't even look at us, and we're able to take the double kill, getting the clutch win, GG. Again, guys, thank you all for watching. I really wanted to discuss strategy because, again, I feel like we need to go back to our roots because a lot of you guys just aren't really understanding the concept of strategies y'all think that there's one way to play and one way only and y'all kind of just stick to that whether it works or not and y'all don't change your play style brs are designed for players to change their play style on the fly there is no one trick wonder there is no video out there that's going to show you how to win games more efficiently with just one video you're gonna have to watch multiple videos get in multiple scenarios and kind of just develop an eye for how to rotate how to obtain high ground how to avoid getting third party how to push yourself between two teams and get out of a bad position. And the list goes on. And again, going back to teamwork as well, like one of the last squads we were spectating, when he was driving through the ravine, he just left his squad so he can go solo a whole team by himself. Guys, look, he was pretty decent. He was a pretty decent player, but no matter how good you are, the objective of the game is to win and win using teamwork. If you're playing quads, you need to think about your team. He just left them out in the middle of the open by themselves where they could have been sniped because they were vulnerable. He should have picked them up push the team together and they probably would have ended up not dying regardless of the fact that they still won the game because your dude carried his ass off but again i really hope you enjoyed the video if you did let me know by leaving a like on it if you didn't smash that dislike button as well and also subscribe to the channel today but until next time you have a good one and good luck in warzone